Hi folks, hope you're doing well. Sorry, a bit, a bit of a delay that I got uh, distracted. Anyway, yes, it's uh, just gone half past 2 p.m. on the 14th of June 2020. Yeah, okay. Oh dear, here we go again. Anyway, so there's been another incident. Well, I'm not sure when this incident actually happened, but the recording of it has just come out. Very sharp Brooks, and he's shooting. I mean, this this wasn't a racial shooting, really. I mean, it's a racial person, but this was God knows why this police officer shot him. Um, in case you're not aware of the situation, Bashard, I think that's how you pronounce his name, um, was sleeping in his car in a Wendy's car park. And the police were called because somebody was sleeping in their car. He went in his car park. Um, they came. He got out of the car. They spoke for quite a while. Everything seemed civil. It was obvious he was a bit drunk. Clearly he was drunk. He himself sort of admitted he was drunk. He, towards the end, said he would take a breathalyzer and found that. And right up until the point where the handcuffs were going to go on, Everything was calm, everything was respectful, everything was exactly how you want it to be. But as soon as the handcuffs started going on, he, Rayshard Brooks, decided he was going to resist arrest. Two police officers with him, but the thing of it is, that's what alcohol can do. It can make you think that you are suddenly Superman. And that you are able to get out of the situation without any consequences. Now, the police officers should have always been aware, ever since their first day of training, that when dealing with someone who's drunk, that person is unpredictable because they're bloody drunk. That's the first thing. Do not expect, even if that person is calm, through most of it, do not expect that person to necessarily remain calm. Because they are drunk, they are therefore unpredictable. Once things start to get physical in any way, shape or form, which put on the handcuffs is physical, suddenly things could change. That is the reality of the situation. Anyone who is a police officer should be aware of that, as that should be amongst the basic training. These officers found that, really. which was rather stupid, but there you go. So they decided to try and taser this man, which again, didn't need to do. Remember, this man is drunk. Because he's drunk, it means he's not quite able as he would be if he was sober. Now, he's a big fella. He's slightly bigger than the police officer who was speaking to him. Not much. Looks slightly more muscular, slightly taller, but not much. Now, because he's drunk, that sort of reduces his, his size a bit, as in his ability. One second. Let's pause this and sort this situation out with the dogs. All right, there you go. Back. Sorry about that. Amber was um, whining because Molly had a ball. So I've just set the ball away so I can just finish this, and then they can play again afterwards. But this is important. Um, what happened here? Well, Jesus Christ. Um... The normal stupidity. I mean, you've got to say the initial reaction is what the bloody hell is this man doing? Yeah. You know, even in a drunk state, you know that there are, that there's all this angst at the moment between brown skinned people and the police. That the police have a habit sometimes of you know choosing the first opportunity or the first excuse to shoot and kill a brown-skinned person, right? You are brown-skinned, so therefore, first of all, think about it from that point of view. Secondly, think about it from the point of view that you are resisting arrest, right? The bloody hell are you doing? You spent all that time talking to that officer. You know he's a fairly decent officer. He's not being abusive towards you. He's not trying to fight you. He's not trying to kill you through most of the video. I will link the video to this one. 
It's uh, nearly seven minutes. You don't see the final bit. You don't even see, suddenly his camera goes weird right at the important bloody point again. Which again, come on, these body cams are bloody useless, aren't they really? When they're needed, they're absolutely useless. They just turn themselves off. Or freeze. Now, is that intentional? To protect the police? Because apparently, um, this police officer was investigated and found not guilty because he claimed... And this, again, is stupidity. I mean, how prophetically weak are these police officers, right? He claimed... Well, I just... I just well, sorry, I'm stepping ahead. I will step back one second. Ugh. I've got to try and get emotion. As soon as you get emotion... I, I did a video yesterday talking about the fact that um, when you get emotion, when you let emotion get into these things, you rent and you go off course. Well, that was just a perfect example of that there you go example of that went completely of course got emotional you know about the whole situation and you know suddenly wasn't in control anymore anyway back to what happened yes so he started resisting arrest then the police decided to taser him taser didn't work initially and then the man got hold of the taser for some reason he what in your mind would decide make you decide to go for a taser? Police officer's taser. To get one of their weapons. Because it is a weapon. It's one of their weapons. Jesus. Um, we'll come back around in a second to what I was talking about. In a second, we'll, we'll get to that. But we'll catch up. Then, yeah, so they struggled for the taser. The man then started to run away. Police officer's chasing him. Now, there's not too sure what the situation is because there's two videos. I will link both because the initial seven-minute video doesn't show what happened after the struggle. The second one does. It doesn't show the struggle. It doesn't show the, the last bit. So I'll link the two because together they show up until the point of shooting. So... But it was initially reported that the man was running away with the taser and the police officer then decided to shoot him. The police officer citing the reason why is because the man had a taser and that that was a lethal weapon. And they were afraid for their safety because the man had a lethal weapon. This exact lethal weapon that you were trying to use on him resisting arrest he's resisting arrest and you decide to use a taser on him this taser that you're now claiming is a lethal weapon that could kill why were you using this on him then that's how the police officer got away with killing this man this man was running away but the second video shows he was running away the um one of the officers, I think, tried to taser him with another taser. And he turned round and tried to taser the officer as he was running. Um, I think that was just before the shooting. It shows one officer close enough to him to taser him. Him trying to taser the officer as they were both running. And then the officer further behind is probably the one who opened fire and killed him. Now again, okay, if it's okay for a police officer to shoot and kill someone because they are trying to taser the officer's partner, then it must therefore be deemed okay if an officer is tasering your friend and you have a gun on you, you can shoot the officer and kill him. Because the officer is trying to kill your friend. must therefore be reasonable that must therefore be okay because if the police can use that as an excuse then a civilian can also use that as an excuse even against a police officer because if a police officer is behaving in an unlawful manner you can exercise a civilian arrest 
If you can exercise a civilian arrest in normal circumstances when a police officer is breaking the law, you can also exercise what a policeman would do in the case of someone trying to kill somebody. So you can protect the people around by killing an officer. If you believe that officer is acting in an unlawful manner and has no regard for life at all. If they're being reckless in the use of their tools and they are trying to kill somebody, you have every right to protect yourself and to protect the people around you, even that person that the police officer is trying to kill. And if that means the only way you can do that is to shoot the police officer, then you have every right to do so, according to the officer who killed this man. So the point of it is you've got to use logic and the logic they're using can be used against them. This is the thing with, with the police, the police have got, things have got to get to a point where the police understand the excuses and the logic they use can be used against them. Now, I think the only way for the police to really start taking notice is if brown skin people and pink skin people do exactly what the police do to the police and use the same excuses. And then once they're using the same excuses, they can say, oh, but yeah, the police officer said that person had a taser and that was a lethal weapon. So, sorry, the police officer pointed a taser at me, so I had no choice but to shoot him because he was threatening my life. According to that police officer who killed Rashad Brooks, you know, a taser was a lethal weapon. Because it's a lethal weapon, then if someone's threatening me with a taser, don't care who they are, for no reason, then what they're doing is unlawful. They're breaking the law, and if they're breaking the law and threatening my life by doing so, then I have a right to defend myself. That's logic. That's the logic of the situation. Now, in the end, oh, Jesus, it's that's so difficult. That man, Rashard Brooks, would then have been face, face to face with God, having his day of judgment with God, whether he goes to heaven or hell, no idea. But he would have had his day of judgment with God, and he would have been shown that video, and he would have realized just how incredibly stupid he was. That when dealing with cops at this moment in time, you don't do really any of what he did. There were too many excuses there. Too many things that he did could have given any cop the excuse to kill him. I mean, I think it's perfectly reasonable that if... You are a brown skin person, male, female. If any cop comes over to you, whether you're in your car, whether you are out in the street, whether they are shit to come out of your car and speak to them, get on the floor straight away with your hands behind your back. If they take stand up, just say, no, nope. sorry, I'm not. Just put the cuffs on me, okay? Put the cuffs on me. Put me down somewhere where you know that I'm not a threat to you. Because my life depends on this. Or it could do. I'm not willing to die for this. I'm not willing to die so that you feel that I'm treating you as a good cop. Because obviously some good cops could get offended by that. Tough. Tough luck. It matters not if you get offended. I'm sorry. You should be more offended by the fact that um, cops like this one did what he did and then used the excuse, well, this man had a taser, so I had to shoot him. I had to take his life because he had a taser. Excuse me, policemen carry tasers. Right? Police officers carry tasers all, all, all around the bloody world. 
if they're such lethal weapons, then they shouldn't carry tasers, should they? You know, potentially, a taser is a lethal weapon. If you have a bad heart, then a taser could kill you. Yeah. And the problem is, most people don't even realise they've got a bad heart if they do have a bad heart. So a taser is, indeed, in some cases, a lethal weapon. It shouldn't be used. It shouldn't be used. Officers should be trained to deal with situations. Yeah, somebody's resisting arrest. Are you not trained to deal with that? Is your first course of action get the taser? Say this person is drunk. If this person is drunk, then his ability to fight goes right the way down. His ability to use his strength to his maximum goes right the way down because he's drunk. It should be easy to control because he's drunk. The problem is again, the officer, the first thing you do, you're dealing with someone who's drunk, you don't pull their arm behind their back. You say, would you mind placing your arm behind your back so I can just get the cuff on? Thank you. And the other one, please. There you go. Cheers. There you go. Done. Once you start pulling them arms, when they're sober, their understanding is it's not hurting. Yeah, they're putting their arms behind your back. It's not hurting, though. So I'll leave it. If it hurts, then they might start to resist. Somebody who's drunk, different matter completely. Yeah, they're trying to force me to do something I don't really want to do. So I'm going to resist. Because they're drunk, they have that courage. That Dutch courage, as it's called, which they wouldn't normally have when they were sober. So police training, come on, kick in. Understand what you're dealing with here. It's crazy. Absolutely insane. I mean, how on earth these things keep on being allowed to happen, I don't know. It's ridiculous. But this one, no. I mean, realistically speaking, had this happened to a white guy, if it had been a pinky skin colour guy, resisting arrest, grabbing a taser and trying to taser a police officer as he runs away and the police officer is chasing him, quite likely the other cop would have shot him. So I don't think this is a racial thing, racial shooting, but it is still a murder of somebody. But I don't think it's for racial reasons and that this copper should be held accountable because what he did was unnecessary. You do not need to shoot the person to kill them. First of all, they're running away from you, right? Even if they've got a taser, leave him. You've got his face on camera. You've got the license plate of his car. Leave him. Let him sober up. Let him run off. Even if he's got a taser, let him run off. Get it when you go and get him later. Okay? Knock on his door later when he's sobered up. You know, do everything calmly. Put rubber bullets in your gun if necessary. So you can shoot, but you won't kill. There seems to be this attitude amongst police that taking a life doesn't really matter. But if you're defending yourself or your partner, even from a taser, you have the right to take someone's life. I mean, that is just wrong. It's all levels of wrong. I mean, in the video I was watching earlier about this, um, an Australian person left a comment because he had trained um, I think with the Australian Army and the British Army. And they'd been in Ireland during the troubles over there in the, in the 80s. And it, as he himself said, if people were chucking rocks at them, doing whatever they were doing, if they were attacking them, they weren't allowed to fire at all. If people were shooting at them, if that person then 
throws his gun down and runs away. They have to run after him if they can catch him. Or they have to let them go. They can't shoot them in the back. They weren't allowed to do that. And that was the army. This is a civilian force. Yet they seem to be allowed to do that. To shoot someone in the back. Crazy. And justify it. Because the person had a taser or because the person, even because the person was trying to taser your partner. Come on. That's not reasonable in any way, shape or form. So the training of the police officer was poor because, again, if you're dealing with a drunk, Training should kick in. You should know how to deal with this individual. If you don't know how to deal with somebody because they're drunk, then that's not good. It's not clever. It's not ingenious. It's just wrong to do so. So there you go. It is what it is, isn't it? You know? I don't know. I mean, what is the answer to it? What do you do with that situation? If the police are so badly trained, they're quite happy to shoot someone in the back because that person has a taser or because that person is trying to taser your partner, which is really non-lethal. We know it's non-lethal because the police have told us it's a non-lethal thing, this taser. It can bloody well hurt. Yeah, but again, the taser itself should only be used in extreme circumstances because it can bloody hurt. It's designed to totally incapacitate someone. What's the word? Um, the word's up in my brain, but I can't quite get it. Um, Make someone unable to function, to move, to fight back. Incapacitate. There you go. <laughs> Got it out. It's supposed to do that. Now that you should only be looking to do that to someone if the ex if the circumstances are extreme. Yeah. You know, so if you're playing someone, someone's attacking you with a baseball bat, and they don't seem to stop, want to stop, then maybe use that. And of course, a baseball bat around the head is going to be incredibly dangerous possibly lethal so therefore using a sort of extreme but not lethal force may then come into practice somebody resisting arrest drunk no sorry no you're going to these extreme measures far too early and you, you should be fired for doing that and the person training you should be fired for doing that. Say the training is terrible. Ah, oh dear. Just as things were starting to calm down with regards to the George Floyd, George Floyd situation, we have this one. And this is not the same, not in any way, shape, or form. Nowhere near the same. But as tensions were starting to die down, suddenly this poof, tensions go up again. The Wendy's where this happened was then set on fire, rioting around the area. Yeah. <sighs> Nothing to do with Wendy's. The shop, the, I mean, okay. As a fast food restaurant, it's probably better being on fire than actually being serving people crappy foods, but, um, no, yeah, it's, it's a ridiculously stupid thing to do. To go and set the place on fire. I'm going to set somewhere on fire. Set the police station on fire. That's where the issue is there. Go and find the police training facilities. Set them on fire. You know, set a bloody Wendy's on fire. No. Is that why I always hated with the, um, the Irish situation and the troubles over there? Is that they would bomb pubs with innocent people. Yep, sorry, no. 
You want to go and bomb the house's apartment? Do that. Yeah, you want to go and bomb 10 down the street? Do that. They're the people that are causing you problems. It's not the people in a pub and a bar that's causing you problems. It's the people in power that are causing you the problems. Go and bomb them. We wouldn't agree with that, but we would understand it. You're not these people in... Um, Actually, I don't even know where that happened. Good question. Atlanta. It was in Atlanta, yeah. But there's people in Atlanta. If they were actually targeting the police training or the unions or the police headquarters or anything like that, burning them to the ground, it would get all around people to get out first, clearly. Um, that would be understandable. Yeah, that's who they're angry against. Wendy's? Why are you attacking Wendy's? Does it happen in their car park? Because maybe one of the members of staff or somebody who visited the place called the police about this man in his car. That's not okay. You know, damaging the business is not okay. You know, taking your anger out on them is not okay. It's not reasonable in any way, shape or form. Anyway, that'll have to do for now. If I carry on, I just get more and more emotional. And, you know, as I say, doing speaking about a situation when you're emotional, you're not going to be speaking from the point of view of wisdom or understanding. As shown in the first few minutes of this video. But we got there. We got around to that point. Yeah, but yeah, of course, it is something which is incredibly emotional that this police officer decided to take someone's life over something so incredibly stupid yeah he was tasering your partner but if tasering is so bad why the bloody hell were you trying to taser him yeah, if tasering is that bad that you've got to shoot someone because they're trying to taser your partner why were you trying to taser him you think it's okay for him to be tasered but not your partner Ugh. See, it's, as I said, I mean, I'm, I've said from weeks ago, weeks ago, weeks ago, weeks ago, weeks, weeks ago, that this is not really a racial thing. This is a thing about standing, your standing within society. Police officers seem to believe that they have a high standing in society. That's because they do. They're given that high standing by the politicians, right? They are above the people, the police. And that's what you saw there. Mr. Brooks, he was not worthy in any way, shape or form. So therefore, tasering him, no problem. Even though it causes his body extreme pain, doesn't matter. He's not worth anything. So it doesn't matter. Police officer, this man's partner, oh no, he's worth something. Can't go tasering him. You even attempt to tase him, we're gonna to have to shoot you. Because he's worth something. Yeah, that's the issue. That's always been the issue. That was the issue with Mr. Freud as well. The police officer saw this man, Mr. Freud, as worthless. Not because of his colour. Nothing to do with his colour at all. As you notice, with the officers standing with um, Mr. Sharvin, one was oriental looking. Um, obviously, some of his relatives had come from that area. Um, so, a minority. One was half caste and had parents or relatives that were brown. So, Mr. Sharvin had worked with people that were brown skinned. Probably had friends with people that are brown skinned. It had nothing to do with skin colour. That despicable treatment of Mr. Freud. That was down to you're not worth anything. You're not even worth the same as an animal, not even the same as a pig. Because at least a pig gives me bacon. What do you give? What do you do? 
What do you provide for society? Nothing. You're not worth anything. I can put my knee on your neck because you don't matter. And it doesn't matter that I do this because people are videoing, but it doesn't matter. That's what the officer was thinking. And that's the point. It's a worthlessness-ism. It's not racism. It's a worthlessness-ism. Same as this video, this stuff. So, <sighs> I, think, I think the police need to be taken down a peg or two. Or three or four or five or six or seven or eight or nine or ten pegs. But at least a peg or two. They need to be taken down to realise they are not above the people. They are not. Neither are politicians. They are not above the people. Police and politicians are there to serve the people. Their job is to serve. The job of police is to serve and protect. We see it in the TV police series. To serve and protect. Then start serving and start bloody protecting. Everyone. Realise that... I mean, in a way, I said the other day, if the police, police are reformed, then the left is going to have a field day and innocent police officers will be found guilty of stuff and will lose their jobs. Maybe face prison sentences for things they didn't actually do. But maybe that would be a good thing. No. Maybe that would be a good thing. I mean, the police aren't exactly against you know, pushing for someone to be found guilty who they know is innocent because it serves them. They're not exactly bothered about killing someone who's innocent, are they? Not at all. It doesn't seem to bother them in the slightest. I mean, there's not an awful lot of outrage, is it? It's only when you know, these, these things get onto the TV that suddenly the police from different states are showing outrage at what happened. When it happens in their state, they're showing no outrage, are they? No. They act as if everything's okay. Oh, it's just the police officer doing wrong. It's just one person, that's all. Anyway. I said anyway that I do earlier. Well, that I do. I will speak to you soon. God bless. Bye-bye. Don't have nightmares. Thankfully, these things are still few and far between, even though as soon as one happens, they're right on top of the news. But as I said, that's a different issue. That's the news media. And I would suggest that people don't play their game because they are playing the game in the news media. You don't want to play that. You take care. God bless. Bye-bye.